There are two great theories of physics today. General relativity, which describes the universe on a grand scale, and quantum mechanics, which describes the universe on a microscopic scale. The remarkable thing is that these two theories are fundamentally contradictory. When we try and explain things where they both apply, they just refuse to work together. In addition, as we've learned more and more about the universe, it seems to be getting just still more complicated. Dark matter, dark energy, and a whole host of hundreds of fundamental particles, and no way to put it all together. I think most of us are convinced that there's a new level of understanding which will unify all these laws and phenomena, and the problem is how to break through into this new level of understanding. So you may ask how we research these fundamental laws of physics. Well, one could just sit and think in a room, and if you're very smart, perhaps the truth will come to you. In our case, we're not smart enough to do this, and anyway, we'd get lonely sitting in a room alone. So what we've done is join together in a big team to try and make extremely accurate measurements to find where Einstein went wrong, for example, or to find where our understanding of the world of atoms is incorrect. For example, here we are at Winthrop Tower at UWA. Einstein has told us that up here, time should flow around 30 billionths of a second faster because gravity is a little weaker. Well, that's pretty difficult to measure. What we want to do is put our clock on the International Space Station where time should differ by about a millisecond per year. That's easy for us to measure because our clock is capable of measuring just a few billionths of a second. In my laboratory, we're building several different types of clocks so that we can test the laws of physics. The first type of clock we're building is based on a piece of sapphire crystal about the size of your fist cooled down to four degrees above absolute zero. With this clock, we can measure time with an accuracy of just one second in 300 million years. But for us, this still isn't good enough. So now we're trying to build a new type of clock based on light and atoms that have been cooled to within a few millionths of a degree of absolute zero. We predict we should be able to measure time with an accuracy 10 to 100 times better than with the sapphire crystal. But you might ask why we're building these super accurate clocks. Well, they find use in systems like communications, radar, global positioning satellite systems, all of which could be improved if they incorporated our super accurate clock. At a more fundamental level, we're interested in subjecting the laws of physics to the greatest scrutiny that they've ever been put under. For example, I told you earlier about how there was a conflict between relativity and quantum mechanics. And uh, one of the outcomes of that conflict is that the laws of physics might not be the same, depending on where you are, when you make the measurements, or in which direction you make the measurements. Using our clocks and comparing the time kept by the various types of clocks, we can actually find evidence of this next level of understanding of the universe.